Solo and welcome. Happy Tuesday. I'm Frederick Dunn and this is The Way to Be. What's going on today is we have good weather and I'm going to swap some hive boxes out because out in the apiary some of them didn't hold up very well and they're several years old so I thought what a great time to introduce some of these propola boxes. This particular one has a finish on it by Nature's Image Farm. So if you want to look them up they did a great job. Propola is a patented uh, treatment and if you want to look up uh, the Endura Hive Wax Dipped Nature's Image Farm check them out tell them I said hello pay the same as everybody else and of course we have the smoker lit we're going to get into the hive and they've got brood and so what kind of smoker fuel switch grass please look down in the video description for that it's a fundraiser and it works really good dense white smoke nice and cool stays lit for a very long time so enough about that let's get out in the bee yard and see what's going on so here it is this is a double deep so there's 10 frame double deep langstroth boxes i combined these years ago when one was being robbed out so we had two brood boxes that we put together and of course look at the finish peeling off and this happens a lot too when you don't glue your boxes up well you get tiny openings that the bees can come out of. So we're going to be putting propola boxes in here with a special interior finish designed to encourage the bees to seal it up with a propolis envelope. Proven benefit to the bees. And uh, we're just going to pull these. You can see I even had to hot glue a mouse trap on here because I had a hole in the back of the box. Obviously, bad news. And that's one of the really old Be Smart Designs hive stands. And then, of course, we have a standard solid bottom board metal plate on the front which comes from hive gate and uh, that's a three inch opening I had to put that on there because guess what had a mouse get in that's right the entrance was too large three eighths would have kept that mouse out but we're gonna see some frames and see how that held up this is hive alive fondant five pound pack they did not consume it well they ate the little hole all the way through to the clear pack but we're gonna pull it now because today is April the 16th and we don't need fondant anymore. So now we've pulled it off and I'm going to put that cap on there. So it's closed up. Guess what? No more feed because dandelions are opening. And they were eating it. I'm just going to take this and set it out for the rest of today at the uh, robbing station. And then of course tonight when they've all gone back to their hives, I'm going to put that away and we can liquefy it and make syrup out of it later on if we want to. So let's get back to the hive. I have an insulated B-Max cover with double bubble inside. How many layers did we put in? Three. And that kept the hive top warm. And what did that cause? It caused them to leave plenty of honey through winter. So this is why they didn't eat a lot of their fondant pack. I also use a hive stand. I don't like to put equipment on the ground when it comes to bees because we're pulling frames with bees on them, and I don't want that queen to get away and scoot around on the ground. That would be a disaster, plus I don't want a bunch of grass sticking to it. So with the inner cover off, this is what we're seeing. And uh, if you look at the way the frames are, wherever the bees are congregated, very good chance you've got brood there because that's where they need to keep it warm. Sure, it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit and sunny right now, which seems warm to us, but bees need 94 to 97 degrees on the brood box. Don't forget your bucket so that you can uh, save your scrapings and turn it into beeswax renderings later. Now look at this. Full deep Langstroth frame still capped. I think this is left over from winter. We do not have a nectar flow now that would justify that. So I'm going to pull the deep frames that are full of capped honey and I'm going to create the number one and the number ten position to sandwich everything with it. And some of these I'm going to pull out and collect because we also need to make some open space for our bees in spring. How am I going to do it? Wooden frames, acorn, heavy waxed plastic inserts. I got all that stuff from Better Bee. You can get yours there too and play the same that I did. I got no discount for that stuff. So the other thing is where would I put my capped bees honey wax, honeycomb with uh, honey in it? I put it in this uh, Hive Butler tote. I'm going to get the bees off of the capped wax and capped honey before I put them in that uh, hive butler. I use this high velocity little mamby pamby blower that's designed to blow out computers and stuff like that. But guess what? It's battery powered and it works great to blow 
bees off of comb, particularly when it's capped like that. They can't hold on very well. Keep an eagle eye out for any queen cells. Although, based on what I'm seeing, as far as resources go, the population in this hive, I don't anticipate seeing queen cells. But uh, we'll get the honey out of the way, and you just want to keep your eyes peeled for that. So look, we have some capped honey here. We did disrupt some of the comb there, and the bees are cleaning that up. I did use smoke, as we mentioned before, but look at this, pollen. Lots of pollen. It takes a full frame of pollen in the cells like this. It's being processed by the nurse bees to create a full frame of brood. That's right. And why am I inspecting at 1 o'clock in the afternoon? Because most of the forages are out and about, and we want them out of the way so we can see what we're seeing right here, right now. That friend's in pretty good shape, and that is better comb. It's a synthetic bee comb. So it's beeswax in every other way, other than the fact that it was not made by bees. But we're pulling some of it out. We're going to get rid of it. We're going to swap it out with some uh, new foundation there. And there again, uh, because it's capped wax, I don't have to worry about them extending those cells out and filling the gap where the new foundation is. Instead, I expect to see them build out the new foundation. Now look at this. Brood, lots of it. So we're going to go ahead and keep all the brood frames together. Do not checkerboard brood frames ever, in my opinion. Just letting you know, letting you know what I know because it makes it easier for the bees to keep these frames in the same order that there were. Remember, we're changing out their boxes and uh, we want brood to brood. But they still have to keep it warm. We've got some rain coming down the pike here, but it's not gonna be bad. So what looks like kind of a shotgun pattern here with capped pupa cells there, they actually have larvae in them. So the pattern's not as bad as you might think initially looking at it. Of course, we bred right around the edges, and now we can see better that the cells that look empty actually have brood in them. This is worker brood, and we're keeping an eagle eye out, of course, for the queen. She could be anywhere. But I'm moving slow through here because I'm sharing with you what we're doing. And look, that's pollen. That's what the yellow stuff is there. Bees are bringing it in at a very high rate. Now the cells at the very bottom have nothing in them. And we're using the sun, of course, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon to show us what's inside these cells. Now some of that uh, larvae there looks a little dry to me. It seems like they could have a little more nutrition going on. And then look, we have another frame full of capped honey, which tells us what? They didn't need those resources in wintertime. So they went through really well. And as we saw in the fondant pack, they didn't consume much of that. They had what they needed. So we're going to put all these frames together and uh, then we're going to get down to that bottom box and see what's going on. So what do we do here? We have fully capped honey in the 10th frame position. We have fully capped honey right there. I'm going to put fully capped and then we have two brand new frames of undrawn heavy wax foundation. The heavy wax part on that foundation is important. And what do we have to do also? Don't forget on the bottom box is scrape away all this burr comb. Because you want to maximize compatibility when you're stacking your boxes together, so scrape it all off as shown here. I didn't show you the actual scraping because I'm also holding a camera today. But I put it in the bucket. Stainless steel bucket, by the way, in case you're wondering. And those uh, solid plastic frames here are acorn heavy wax frames. They've been around for a long time. This is the propola box. It's called that because of propola and marla, propola. So propola is the marla, propola, marla spivak. The spivak lab, University of Minnesota. So we've got the second box here and we're gonna pull the frames out of that bottom box and we're gonna put them in this one. But there are some frames that are damaged here. Look at that. Remember I said we had a mouse in this one and I don't mind getting rid of this anyway. This is really old, better comb. And this was the version that was stuck in there with uh, toothpicks. Didn't hold up very well. So now we're putting in brand new frames with brand new heavy wax acorn foundation. And we do have some honey in here, but I think I'm going to pull most of it depending on the condition. So I have two new frames in here. So for each one I'm pulling out and putting in the hive butler or dispensing with, um, I am putting in new frames. This is the time to do it. Now it's looking like we could have some brood here. I don't rotate my boxes. And I'm going to show you why here in a second. Now that looks like a queen cell it could be. Look at all the larvae down here. I'm not rotating anything. 
They're naturally starting to lay into the lower box down near the entrance. Why? Because there's only one entrance. There's no venting. So the queen just instinctively moves down towards the ventilation. Look at all of that brood. That is fantastic. So we have uh, larvae. We have eggs. And I think we're good to go. And there's the queen right on cue. So she's in the bottom box because that's where all the action is right now. She's laying eggs all over these deep frames near the entrance. And remember, this box sits on a slatted rack. So there won't be any box swapping going on. But I did put in brand new frames in the number one, the number two, the number nine, and the number ten positions. And we kept all the brood frames pushed together. This is a slatted rack at the bottom, just looking around, making sure no queen cells at all. That's good news. And so we put them all together. So we have the brood and the queen in the first box on the bottom. We have a slatted rack, solid bottom board, three-eighths high entrance. And uh, the bees are still coming and going like there wasn't a problem. So everything is put back together. We've given them more room. We took out some frames of uh, capped honey. We took out some damaged comb. And the smoker, of course, is still going strong. We cinched everything down. No feet on top. Insulated inner cover. By the way, if you're insulating, leave your insulation on all year round. Why wouldn't you? And these boxes are really well made. These particular propola boxes happen to be made out of cedar. And so they don't require a finish. We're going to see how they go. And look what's going on the landing board here too. This happens whenever you do something that's very disruptive to the hive. And that is that they start fanning and holding up and exposing their Nazanoff gland. And they're sending out the hive scent, the queen mandibular pheromone. And if you got right down there and sniffed it, you would smell a lemongrass smell. It's very interesting. So get your nose up there. Don't be afraid. Smell it. It's the recall signal to get everybody back. Look on the right there. That's a drone. Now that drone, I don't believe, was produced by this colony. I think that's a visitor. Why do I say that? Because I didn't find any evidence of active drone larvae. No capped larvae. And there is drone comb in this hive, but it was non-productive so far. So I think these drones are visiting from the area. That's good news, though. Because if we have to do a split of any kind, and if we need to get a queen mated this time of year, we need drones. And I do see that they're starting to show up in the area, so that's good news. This worker here is fanning her Nazanoff gland, and uh, she's just trying to make sure everybody knows where to go. There's a drone right there again. Looks like he's just been fed, and he's scooting out in search of a virgin queen somewhere. Look at the pollen on the legs of that worker. And somebody lost their pollen on the landing board. So you can see this worker on the right there nibbling away at it. Why do they do that? Because it has nectar on it. So the bees use nectar or in some cases honey that they bring from their hive. And that's how they stick the pollen together. So I've seen bees chew it apart. They won't pick it up and put it in a cell inside the hive. That's for foragers that are bringing it in direct from the flowers right into the hive and they scratch it off their hind legs and put it in the cells themselves. Nectar, when it comes in, gets passed on to in-hive bees, what I call storekeeper bees, and they put the nectar in the honey cells. So that's it. And look, my smoker is still full of those switchgrass pellets. If you're interested in those, please look down in the video description. Thanks for watching.